Hey everybody, this is Ryan, a.k.a. Salos, and welcome to another Free Game Friday. I thought we would play a little bit of Planet Side 2 today, since we've got the Game Apocalypse 2013 event coming up in one week. One week and a day, I guess, technically. So, uh, we're going to just kind of hang out today. I'm going to play around with some classes that I'll probably be playing on that day. Maybe do a little bit of practice driving some uh, ATVs and the lightnings and... Uh, basically just kind of hone my skills a little bit. I say that. In reality, you're probably going to see some really terrible gameplay. But it um, should be entertaining either way. So I'm not in a squad right now. Normally I would be with uh, with my outfit on a squad. Uh, there's a lot of voice chat though when that happens. and I don't want you guys to be overwhelmed by uh, outfit voice chat. Let's see here. We've got a fight going on at the bio lab. Oh, yeah. Always the best place to go. So we'll see what that looks like up there. If it's a little too crazy, we can always go somewhere else. But since I'm light assault, bio lab is always a great fight. So let's see what's going on. It should be mentioned that my light assault is actually a little bit tricked out. I'm level 26 on this server. Uh, and Light Assault is my second uh, class that I play the most. The first being uh, Infiltrator. So I've actually got uh, I've got the Track 5S here. It's got a grenade attachment. Got a grenade launcher. You'll see that in action. Uh, I've got C4. Uh, one brick of C4. And uh, I've got Jetpack Enhancements. Actually, I can show you guys real quick. Light Assault. So, for Light Assault, I've got one Restoration Kit available. I've got level 5 Jump Jets. I've got one thing in Nano Weave Armor, because it's only one cert point. You should get it on every class. Uh, I've got one Brick of C4, as I explained earlier. And for my Track 5S, I've got a Suppressor on it. Uh, I've got a Scope for the Day. I've got a Scope for the Night. I've got an Underbarrel Grenade Launcher. And uh, I've also got a Shotgun I can use. My Peter also has a suppressor on it because I use it on my uh, infiltrator a lot. So the idea of my light assault is um, stealth attacks. I use a lot of rooftop attacks. Uh, it's all about the enemy not knowing where I'm at. And the suppressor allows you to do that. What the suppressor does is it not only... Um, oh, I'm under fire. The suppressor not only um, blocks the sound of the gun. So you can hear it's not a whole lot of sound. But also, too, it keeps your radar uh, signature from showing up. So on the bottom on the mini-map, anytime somebody fires, you see those arrows, those red arrows on the screen. Those pop up because they've either been spotted or when they fire their gun, it pops up a dot at least, sometimes an arrow. I don't want that to happen because I can't take a lot of damage. So for that reason, I, uh, I have the suppressor on my kit. And it works really well, to be honest. Now what's going to happen here in a second, uh, the generator below me is going down, and what that's going to do is it's going to drop the, uh, ooh, good target. It's going to drop the, uh, got him. It's going to drop the gen, so see now the, the doors are open right there to the SCU, or the spawn control unit. So we can SCU now go in, and we compromised it now, that is going to shut down the NC's ability to spawn. So now that I've described it a little bit, it's time to get in the action here. This guy's going to go down immediately. Let's see if I can get a little bit closer. The one downside to having a suppressor on the Track 5S is that your range is not that great. And as you can see, my aim is already pretty terrible as is. See if I can sneak around here. Nobody coming out of the spawn room at the moment. We've got this place fairly locked down, so I think we're gonna cap it. It's not gonna be a whole lot of kills though. destroyed. 
You also get points for spotting guys, so I always try to spot people first. If possible. That's a flashbang grenade. As you can see, that blinds you. That's another kit. Oh, Max. That's another kit that the... Uh, oh, he's already dead before I got there. That's another kit that the Light Assault can pick up. Um, there's actually two grenades. I'll show you those. A uh, flash grenade, that's the one that just went, a blinding flash, and the smoke grenade. You can see through the smoke grenade with an infrared scope, which is one of the scopes that I have. So one assault tactic for light assault could be to uh, drop the could be to drop the uh, smoke grenade and then use your infrared scope to pick off enemies inside of the smoke because they can't see you, but you can see them. Unless, of course, they get smart and they also equip a infrared scope. Now I'm going to get up here in this tree. We're about to cap this base. It doesn't take very long because our influence is 100%, as you can see by the map. So it's only going to take a matter of minutes and we'll have the base capped. I'll fly inside and then we'll move on and do something else here. I'm going to try to show you guys a few tricks and tips. I'll try to stick to the Light Assault the class, is ours. if possible. Planet Side 2 is a dynamic game. Things constantly change, so uh, you can't get good at one class and use it. You really do have to be willing to. Man, they really like the flashbangs. You really do have to be willing to use a variety of classes. Generator uh, prepared. It's just kind of the nature of the, of the beast. Anytime that I have lots of res, like I do right now, you can see I have 750 infantry res. I always want to try to stock up a little bit on C4, which costs 100 uh, infantry res a pop. I always try to leave 100 or 150 at the bottom so that I can get um, a max if necessary. It does cost res to pull a max unit, which are the big... Uh, you saw the mech cues right over here in this area a second ago. So, alright, so we got that base, so let's go out here. Now I'm wearing camo in the game. It's important to talk about, when you talk about any game that's free to play, it's important to talk about how the economy and the transaction system works because it can affect your gameplay. Now one thing I want to make sure everyone understands, the Track 5S, the weapon that I'm using here, that is a weapon that was bought. I did have to pay real life money for that weapon um, now I got it on a triple uh, a triple station cash day uh, they've been two since the launch that I know of where you can basically spend a dollar but get three dollars worth of station cash that is the way I would do it and then I also bought the track 5s I think it was on sale when I got it also they have bundles if you look at the market so right now there's a gear starter bundle it has six different kinds of helmets in it. Normally it would be 1,500 station cash. cash. It's on sale for 700, which is 53% off. I highly recommend buying the weekly sale bundles. As you can see, I bought the infantry starter bundle. That unlocked uh, some more weapons for me, and it really does make your money uh, go farther. The featured items are not on sale. They're just newer things. This is the SMG, uh, which actually I have an SMG review out. Uh, I'll post that in the uh, in the comments or maybe I'll just flash it up on the screen while I'm talking or something uh, but I have an SMG it not really a review just a real quick coverage of the SMG and then also the anti-vehicle turret the, the engineer one so those kinds of things can be unlocked weapons have to be unlocked with real life cash um, vehicle gear uh, has to be unlocked with real life cash well I say that it doesn't actually have uh, well the camos do but the weapons actually do not. If you look on the... So let's pick a weapon here. If you look on this sniper rifle, for example, you can unlock it with 700 station cash or you can unlock it with 500 cert points. Right now I have 370 cert points. Uh, some of these things, like the T-18 Cycler, only requires 250 station cash or 100 cert points. So there are weapons that I could go in and I could unlock right now with my certifications in the game. And they would give me different weapons. Here's one thing that's important to note, though. The, uh, let me flip it to where you can see everything the Light Assault can use. So, out of the Light Assault class, I have access to 
the Emperor, and I am in the AFK channel of TeamSpeak. You can see me right up there. I should turn those notifications off. Um, I have access to the pistol. I have access to the Track 5S. I have access to the Track 5. Now, the Track 5 is what you get by default when you spawn in as Light Assault. That's your carbine, and you get the TX-1 repeater with it. The Track 5, you can see the stats there, 40-round magazine, uh, very fairly accurate, good fire rate, not so great damage, and reload speed. The Track 5S actually has a lower fire rate and a lower reload speed, but it has the same amount of damage. So what's the difference, you may ask? Well, the difference is that you can actually switch uh, multiple fire modes on the 5S. So um, the Track 5, you can only do fully auto. You can do uh, semi-auto, I believe, one shot at a time. The Track 5S, you can do three-round burst, you can do full auto, or you can do semi. I'll show you that real quick. So this is obviously full auto. This is a uh, burst. So I hold the mouse down. I'm only going to do three bursts, which helps me to control my shots. It's actually pretty decent at medium range. Um, and then it has one shot as well. I'm only going to shoot one shot at a time when that burst mode is down. Just for those of you that maybe are not super familiar with first-person shooter games. But one thing to note, the other thing you get with the Track 5S, so you may be asking yourself, well, if it, if it is not as fast and it reloads slower, Ryan, why would you be using the Track 5S? Well, here is the difference. If you look at the Track 5, uh, let's see, T5, there it is. You've got suppressor, you've got flash suppressor, you can add on to it, and that's about it. You've got laser sights and some scopes. If you look at the Track 5S, you've got the compensator that you can add on there. You can change the ammunition types for different ranges, and you also can add on an underbarrel grenade launcher, which I have on there, an underbarrel shotgun, uh, which does a ton of damage, and then you also have an underbarrel smoke grenade launcher as well. It's worth noting that my grenades that are in here are normal grenades. Uh, so they do the same amount of damage as a normal grenade, but they can be reloaded where grenades, uh, regular grenades that you throw with the G key, got some enemies over here, regular grenades you throw with the G key have to actually uh, be purchased for, I believe it's 75 resource points a pop. This grenade in here, in my underbarrel grenade launcher, there's two to a clip, so I automatically have two right off the bat, and they can be reloaded from an engineer's kit. So there's a huge advantage to having this gun uh, versus having the Track 5, even if it doesn't do, do as much damage. So I, I say that to say that everything is a trade-off. So you may think, oh man, you were able to buy a better gun, that means you're going to be better than me. Well, not necessarily. In a straight-up fight, I can still be beaten by the same gun that has a faster uh, uh, kill time, which is what the normal Track 5 you get when you spawn in for free gives you. I just have the extra functionality, but I am giving up some things. So there are side grades in the game, but there are not. Um, there's not a lot of true upgrades where you're actually going to be able to buy power. And I think that's important, and I think that's what sets Planet Side 2 apart from a lot of other games on the market. Uh, another thing that you'll note in here is that everything else on this character other than the guns, so the grenade slots, the utility slots, buying bricks of C4, um, getting the scopes and stuff for the guns that I have, even the default Track 5, can only be purchased with certification points. What that means is that you have to play the game to be able to get the things that are going to benefit you the most. Because certifications, or the things that certification buys me rather, like a suppressor, will give me an in-game advantage. If I shoot you with the suppressor, like this gentleman here that I'm going to sneak up on, he's not going to know the direction I'm coming from. And that's going to give me an advantage. Now, he, of course, he may be right on top of me, I don't know. That's going to give me the advantage because he can't see me. Now, I'm going to slowly creep down here and see if I can see him. But I can only get that because I've been playing the game. So, uh, long story short, playing the game is what gives you power. 
not spending money, which makes this a pretty decent model. So the game is very playable regardless of whether you spend money or not. Nah, I don't know if he's run off somewhere. And you have to be careful because... There are bouncing beddies around here. Alright, well, I'm not going to bother with one infiltrator camping around if he wants to sit in here and try to shoot one TR every 10 minutes. That's his deal. Alright, so let's go see what else we can do here. Once again, in my in my mosquito, so I have um, certified my mosquito in a few basic things that get me some decent cert points, and that's it. I don't have a lot in there. As you can see, I've, I've done 2%. I put one point into the timer, which reduced my timer by 60 seconds. Not a bad cert point spent. Uh, vehicle stealth took 30, but it actually makes me, I don't appear on the radar uh, at all, so that's kind of nice. And I put one point into my zoom and one point into my max ammo for my gun. Because you get that much zoom for one cert point. Every one cert point cert, cert in my opinion, should be taken. Uh, it's a great example of how you can get a little bit of a boost in the game without having to spend a lot of time or spend money for that matter. So it looks like we got a hot spot right here. This base is contested. Right off the bat, I see there's a lot of enemy air here. Which I am probably going to be taken down by fairly quickly. This base is actually highly contested. Yep. And I could have built out of that and uh, hit my jetpack. A lot of salt. The, the other advantage to them is that they are the one class that can actually... Um, can actually get out of jams fairly well because they can bail from the aircraft. Let's move over to this side now and see what's going on over here. A lot of salt can actually bail out of the aircraft. They can hit their jetpack, hold it down, and be able to land firmly on the ground without killing themselves. That's another difference from planet side to planet side 2. Planet side 2 does incorporate almost realistic physics. If you bail out of an aircraft in a non-light assault class, you will fly across the map because of the speed of your momentum. Uh, once an object is in motion, it stays in motion until it is hit by a force. Uh, so, but you can put your jetpack thrusters on full and you can reverse that, that thrust and that force and you can actually um, avoid a gruesome death. So this Prowler driver has been so kind as to park right in the vehicle bay. Alright, so let's see, let's see what we can do now. There is going to be a flash race as part of Game Gamepocalypse uh, on March 16th. I don't have any upgrades on my flash. I'm assuming there's going to be some way to regulate that. Because obviously that would be an unfair advantage. For all the people that have uh, speed, high performance, you can get uh, upgrades on the flash as well. Uh, I actually have a few extras on mine. The infantry starter bundle that I bought, uh, for some reason, came with the... Oh no, I actually got a flash package, and I'm about to be run over by my own teammate. Gotta be kidding. So that guy literally ran me over. One problem with this game being free to play, you have a lot of people that are new to the game, don't understand how things work, or just don't care about their teammates. Uh, we call the mindless people that run around in large groups the Zerg, although technically I'm kind of part of it right now because I'm just following everybody else.
One of the cool things too about Planet Side 2, I covered it in my intro video, but you can be any class and you can spawn in any vehicle from day one. Now there's an ammo pack down here on the ground. This will allow me to get some more ammo. I don't need any ammo out here though. I've got to get closer to be able to use my class effectively. Normally I, I would be content with uh, grabbing an infiltrator and standing back and uh, picking people off. I actually have a 12x scope on my main sniper rifle, which is a one shot, one kill sniper rifle if it's a headshot. But uh, I'm trying to work on my light assault class, so let's see what's going on up here. I got some, the skull and crossbones there indicate some dead team members. Whenever you see that, you want to be a little bit careful because that means they were recently killed, which means there's something that could kill you, kind of like this tank right here. And this guy is going to draw a bunch of attention to us. Now that is the new SMG that's in the game. No, I'm sorry, that's a sniper rifle. Man, the way he killed me so fast. That's a one shot, one kill. Sniper rifle, he was able to beat in on me quickly and get a headshot. Game's free, so I really encourage you guys to uh, get in here and experience it for yourself. What's stopping you? You could be on right now. There we go. Now there's two health bars on the bottom. Well, not two health bars, but two bars on the bottom. There you go, making some good use of the grenade launcher. Um, two bars on the bottom. One is a health bar. That is the one that for me is now depleted. The other one is a personal shield. Now the shield regenerates over time. But the health bar does not, unless you have someone heal you, um, or you have a uh, health pack. Now I said this game was all about side grades, and here's a great example of that. I do not have the uh, ability to regenerate my own health because I took a uh, C4 brick instead. That was bad aim again. I took the C4 brick, so to take the C4 brick, I have to give up my health pack. So some classes, I don't have a health pack on. I don't like to go anywhere without my C4 because it's it's really, really useful. It'll, it'll one-shot kill anyone and um, any infantry, including a max, as long as you hit them you know, fairly square. And it does pretty decent damage to vehicles as well. So, I don't really like to be without it. Although sometimes in these inner fights, it is easier to have some health. And I can refill my grenades and my uh, gun ammo from that point there. You can see the usefulness of the grenade launcher, and uh, when you combine that with an engine nearby that can refill you, it makes a pretty good, pretty good combo. Because it's pretty much a one-shot kill on infantry. It's pretty rare that it doesn't kill them in one hit. I don't want to hang around. I don't want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a heavy directly. Um, he will own, own me pretty quick. However, if I can get the drop on him, then that's great. So that's what the Light Assault class is all about, is getting the drop on people. If they don't realize you're there, uh, you have a massive advantage. And you can get that advantage pretty easily just because of your mobility. But the secret is, is you have to remember your mobile and you have to play that class accordingly. You know, use your jetpacks 
as a tool, just like that, and you gotta stay moving. Now you'll see me dial in for these kills. Um, I, I, you know, as you can tell, I'm not that great of a player, and so I have to rely on my scope fairly heavily to be able to get kills. Um, and also, too, it's important to note I don't have laser sights on my uh, on my carbine. Laser sights really help with hip shooting, which is firing without using the scope, but. Um, I don't have that, so I rely a little bit more on my scope. I, I, I pretty much beat in with scope-wise almost every time I make a kill. The other thing to listen for that's very important is um, noises help out immensely. Because you can get a better idea of where the enemy is coming from. Uh, so this isn't a game you really play with the volume down. You could. It'd be, it'd be possible for sure. But you wouldn't really want to. Other thing is map awareness. Using your map to uh, figure out where the enemies are at. And where they need to die from. So that was a max unit right there. The one downside to the map is that the, the dots on the map don't show you uh, what they are for infantry. It could be a max, it could be a heavy, uh, it could just be an infiltrator that you could kill with a few shots if you can get the drop on them. So that makes it a little bit tougher. Uh, unless they're queued specifically. If they fire their gun, they're a dot. Uh, if they get queued, the friendlies will call out what they are. You'll hear the stay alert, uh, enemy heavy, or light assault, or whatever they might be. They're trying to get a flanking position on us here. Don't want to let them do that. I want to make sure I use my mobility. Now, this Max, if he doesn't see me, and I can get the drop on him. No, nah, couldn't do it. See, that Max knows that if I can get near him, I can drop a brick of C4 on him, and he'll be dead instantly. You can see the health that he has there. He has two full health bars. Um, and that's all he has. He doesn't have a recharging shield. Uh, they are very, very resilient to small arms fire. Uh, rockets are pretty much the best way to take them out. Or C4. Either way. Alright, now have we cleared... Looks like we might have cleared most of that area there. We have a few guys still over here. Now, a lightning, I can see a lightning up ahead. Now, these are VS troops here. Uh, so, this is getting into a three way fight, basically. Uh, you have the Vanu Sovereignty, that's the guys that killed me there. I wasn't expecting them to be that many, I was expecting one or two NC loners. Uh, but what's actually happening is this is a three-way fight. You can see here on the map uh, the Venue Sovereignty are pushing from the southeast and we are pushing from the southwest and the NC are caught in the north. So that's going to make it a little bit more complicated because if we push too far to the east we're going to start getting hit gonna start getting hit by uh, by yes guys which could make our lives a little bit difficult as you can see right there so we move into the base and then we get flanked on the east by the VS so it makes it kind of a tougher fight if I was in a, a an actual squad we probably wouldn't be hitting this we'd probably be hitting somewhere else but I'm not And I'm mainly just trying to get some skills going. Because of the massive scale of Planet Side 2, uh, you have to treat it more like a real life battle than you would some other games. Because you never know where someone might be, so it's more important to maintain perimeters 
and fire control than it is to just run in uh, like crazy. A few well-placed shots with the grenade launcher. So you can see right there, that's I would not have been able to get that kill with just my carbine. There's just no way. But anytime I have a anchored advantage like that, it's a great opportunity to make a shot with uh, with a grenade launcher. So when the heavies turn blue like that, that means they're popping their personalized shield, which does give them a, a pretty big advantage um, because it's basically like they have two shields. So you can see mine right now, I have nothing left. One one slap in the face and I die. Um, they get their personal shield like I have like this. Then they have another shield that they can turn on and off. Um, so they, they have some... Uh, in a sustained fight, heavies are definitely the go-to guys. I mean, they have some, uh, if it wasn't for the fact of what I'm trying to do, work on my uh, light assault play, I probably would be going heavy right now. You know, you've got rockets, you've got a massive gun, lots of bullets in it. Shield, uh, for assaulting the ground floor of a base, I mean, it. there's no better class. Might can make an NG and set up a uh, perimeter, maybe, I don't know. But, uh, it's actually been a long time. This has kind of been a longer video. I didn't mean for it to be this long, but it took a while to get into a good fight. Uh, so hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed it, maybe learned some stuff about Planet Side 2. If you'd like for me to do some other class features, maybe check out some of the other classes, play them a little bit, give you guys some tips on those, at least the best I can. Um, then uh, leave a comment and let me know what class you'd like to see next in the bottom of the video. Um, also, likes and uh, favorites are really appreciated, and subscribe as well. That'd be great. So, uh, as always, I have been uh, Salos, and you're watching the Salos Gaming Channel. Thanks a lot. Bye.